many people make this made this center possible some had dreams i want to call on the on, on the chief dreamer who made asia plateau real that mangan Thank you, Ravi, very much for separating the dreamers from the doers. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'd like to join Dr. Ravindra Rao and Mr. Kao in thanking all of you who have come from long distances or from near distances uh, to this dialogue on democracy. your effort in many cases a heroic effort costly effort tiring effort uh, it is very greatly appreciated um, now except for a 19 month period in the 1970s india has remained a democracy from the time of its independence in august of 1947 this makes indian democracy quite wonderful More than wonderful Indian democracy is mysterious or miraculous. Look at any Indian currency note some of you may have some Indian rupees by now and you will get a sample of our numerous languages written in our numerous scripts. We are a diverse people. We are also a talking people. Each of us has a solution for India's problems. <laughs> but those who should be listening to my solution are instead at last voicing their own solutions <laughs> you've seen our traffic you will also notice the shortage of electricity sometimes water with our diversity with our love of our own speech <coughs> and our infrastructure we should not have survived as a democracy but we have we are a functioning anarchy <laughs> this is not my phrase it's a very well phrase uttered decades ago by a european scholar we are an enduring chaos that almost miraculously possesses a shape called democracy so your encounter with india can only give you hope about your country <laughs> above all we are lucky That is the biggest secret of Indian democracy. This country has been exceedingly fortunate. Apart from luck, the largest credit for democracy's survival and deepening in India belongs to the Indian people. The egos and ambitions of politicians, their love of the chair, their love of money, their power can bring has often paralyzed governments. Yet our people have tolerated and understood challenges of governance when tolerance and understanding were needed. And in 1977 our people defeated an authoritarian interlude when they had the electoral chance to do so. Yes, we have been helped by history too. The gun or the sword played only a small part in our independence movement. Because of this history, the gun has not been part of our struggles after independence. the army has stayed up we shout and bellow at one another but it is the ballot not the bullet that decides who rules in india and we have been lucky enough to have a record on the whole of free and fair elections our record has been better on liberty than on equality better on liberty than on fraternity or on dignity if we learn to respect one another's dignity and in particular the dignity of the weak or the vulnerable person we will make more of an impact on the world also india has witnessed great individual achievements but fewer common successes becoming a millionaire has proved easier than freeing a locality of garbage or of potholes of unscheduled power cuts working with one another has proved harder than working for oneself there have been some remarkable exceptions and tomorrow at 5 o'clock you will hear from popatra pawar who is here who in his village of hibre bazar has created an amazing example 
of a whole village working together to solve problems. I pray that India and Indians will remain engaged with all the countries represented here. Who can forget the inspiration offered and being offered by the courageous fighters for democracy in the Arab world? Who can be blind to the enormity of the challenge now faced by the Arab world? <coughs> Who is not moved by the long, patient, painstaking struggle of Aung San Suu Kyi and so many others in Burma? India's future is completely connected to the Middle East, to Africa, to Asia, and the rest of the world. But we do not know these places as, as well as we should. We do not know what makes them tick or what makes them tense. This dialogue will help. We gather in order to know one another, to listen to one another, to promote the listening habit so critical to democracy. We are here not primarily to speak, but to listen and to reflect. Let us, of course, share our struggles, our victories. It is so easy when tough times, tough challenges face us to forget our victories. Let us share our anxieties, our hopes. We will draw strength from one another. At the end, we want, if possible, to return to our places with greater faith, Faith that situations can be changed where necessary. Faith that gains can be consolidated where that is necessary. Let us, if possible, go back with a strategy of what we will do in order to make democracy more real in our country than it is. Let the strategy be a modest one. Let it be a bold one. But it should be a clear one. With the clarity about the people we would enlist and the team we would work with. If possible, let us go back with freer and lighter minds, freed of the weight of anger or resentment that prevents the teamwork that can assist our nation. So let us listen with open minds to one another. May this dialogue produce useful and interesting ideas, hope-giving and healing ideas, in the plenaries, at the workshops, at the Freedom Square occasions which we will be having in our conversations with one another, and in times of silent reflection that we can snatch while we are here.